I know somebody in the comments is going to be like, Katie, you have your shirt on backwards. No, it just looks like this. And honestly, I can't tell if it's on purpose. Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie Colson here. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. We're gonna talk about one of my most anticipatory releases for 2023. The one that I'd be reading in this video is Grady Hendrix's How to Sell a Haunted House. Now I adore Grady Hendrix. He is like a horror comedy author. He wrote such amazing books like Horror Store. Um, I did not like the Final Girl Support Group, but listen, everybody has a miss. He had a miss. He'll bounce back. Um, I really enjoyed We Sold Our Souls. And then my absolute favorite book from him is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Saving Vampires, closely followed by My Best Friend's Exorcism. So I will pick up anything and everything Grady Hendrix writes. As of reading this book, I have read his entire backlist, which I'm very proud. I'm very proud. So real quick, I'm going to give you a summary about this book because I don't know if the summary I gave in the video is good but honestly, most of the time they're not. So How to Sell a Haunted House is about a character named Louise, and she has just recently found out that her parents have both died in a tragic accident. Now she's dealing with that sudden and unexpected and horrible grief, but she's also having to deal with being forcibly reconnected um, to her brother, Mark, who she does not have a good relationship with and has not spoken to in years and years. Now all of their childhood squabbles and all of the horrible things they've done to each other in their childhood and growing up are all being resurfaced as they are both attempting to sell their parents house which as it turns out is haunted and also the mom was a puppeteer and was obsessed with dolls and taxidermy so it's creepy to say the least but that's all i'm gonna say because i do know that i tried to explain it in the video so you'll deal with that rambling here in a minute but anyway let's jump right into reading this anticipatory release of 2023 Hello. Hi. What the heck? Like, I haven't checked my P.O. box in a hot minute, but I didn't think. That's a lot. That's a lot. Also, sorry for all the car noises. I'm literally, I should not be filming this here. I'm on like a really busy highway. Hold. Okay, here we go. A little bit quieter of a setting. I do want to start reading something. I want to start a reading vlog, and there's one book that I really want to start a reading vlog for. And I have no reason to believe that it is going to be anything that's in these packages, but like I'm manifesting it. Like I'm manifesting it because it feels like something that people would want me to read. And everybody knows I love this author. So like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying it and I'm going to jinx myself, but let's open this chat and see what we've got. Oh, wait, wait. How are y'all mind readers? Your mind readers. Oh my God. This is all, I literally just heard about this book last night on Instagram because Ashley from Ashley's Little Library is currently reading it and said she already thinks it's going to be a favorite of 2022. And, and the next day, it's in my, what are you talking about? I've literally never heard of this. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but it's the truth. Some of us are good, others are bad, and some just unfortunate. Have I killed someone? Yeah, I have. Who was it? Let's get started. Oh my god! Okay, I'm so excited. Never mind. Maybe I'll do the reading vlog about that. Who sent this? Okay, Michaela J. Hello, Katie. Hope this book will bring some positive chaos into your life. One, I can already feel the energy of the chaotic joy. Yes. And also, this came at the perfect time. Your bunnies are thinking about you always from Michaela J. That's so sweet. And, uh, and also, I'm not shitting you when I say that, like, the bunnies, they, they literally know everything about my life. Like... They know everything about my life. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you manifestation isn't real. Don't let anybody tell you manifestation isn't real. It is real. 
I manifested this. Oh my God. Stunning Grady Hendrix, how to sell a haunted house. Ah. Uh, I did not bring this up. I did not bring this up. I did not talk about this. I didn't talk about it on uh, Patreon. I didn't talk about it anywhere. And somebody is just, oh my God, Shelly. Okay. Hi, Katie. Thank you from Australia for your banging content. I love your energy and you have made me branch out what I read. So thank you. Oh, I love that. P.S. I've watched your move, moving vlog series like four times. Stunning from Shelly. That is so sweet. Also, I love that series, like the, the moving vlogs. Oh my God, thank you so much because I work so hard on those. I honestly like don't really know that much about what it's about, um, but I literally don't fucking care. Ah. Ah. Oh my God. I could be doing a better job. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Oh my God. This is stunning. Oh my God. Look at that. This is by Stephanie Johnson. She emailed me and was like, hey, um, I saw that you were looking for the hardcover and um, her and I both were talking about how it's like in literally impossible to find the hardcover of the second book at Barnes and Noble or Books A Million. And we both looked and she was like, I found one online. And she said that she was gonna ship, she was gonna ship it to me. And I was like, what the fuck? That's so nice. Look at this book two in the Themis files. So the first one is Sleeping Giants. Second one is um, Waking Gods and Waking Gods is my favorite. And I wanna reread this series because I want to annotate in it. And I know that the audiobooks are like the preferred way of reading it, but there are quotes in this book that I need to highlight. I need to annotate. I need to tab. I need to quote, underline all of that. So Stephanie Johnson, this, I'm obsessed. Okay. I have one more thing. This is definitely a book. <gasps> oh, shit. Okay. Oh, I love the feel. Oh, that's like matte, like rubbery. This is sturdy. This is fucking huge. And the spine, stunning. Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. There was like seven different people that I follow that put, um, this as one of their best books of 2022. Like I know like the Raven haired reader. Um, I know, um, Hannah's recent reads put it on her best books. Nikki's book nook put it on her best books, but I've heard it's super toxic and very Chuck and Blair from Gossip Girl. Who sent this to me? Who really wants me to be in my romance era? Jessica Gavin, enjoy your gift. Jessica, thank you so fucking much. I'm so excited because this feels like something that wouldn't traditionally be in my wheelhouse, but that I'm gonna be end up being obsessed with. I am so excited about all these books. These are all winners, like absolute winners. I'm so excited. These two are such a similar vibe. Like I feel like these could be their own vlog, but speaking of vlog, I wanna start one right now. And I'm not even kidding you. I am not gonna wait to walk into my apartment. I'm gonna sit here in this car, in this parking lot, and I'm gonna read the first chapter of this book and get back to you. All I know so far is that we're following a main character named Louise and she's like 34 and she lives 3,000 miles from home because her parents are like really well known in that town and everybody always asks about like her mom and all this stuff and she's like I want to be my own person so she moves far away. Loves her parents but is like I have to like get out from under your thumb you know and they uh she finds out that she's pregnant but she's not married, doesn't have a boyfriend or anything like that, and calls them and they're like, we'll be there right away because they they love her so much. So they come over and she, the way in such a short amount of time that Grady Hendrix describes Louise's relationship with her family, I am blown away. One, Grady Hendrix is such a good writer. He's such a good writer. I'm literally obsessed. But two, I'm only six pages in, so maybe I'm wrong, but Louise is so similar to me. She is so similar to me. And it's like the daughter is like the responsible, like constantly trying to get like good grades and stuff like that. And then it's always like resentful because the brother is like more of a free spirit and 
um, has made some mistakes in his life and she is resentful because she's like, look at all the things I've done. But then that's also messed up. You know, as an adult, I do look back like on the way that I felt when I was a teenager and I'm like, that is messed up because it's like, yeah, I mean, he's a human being too. It's not like just because you made good grades, you're like the best, you know? But anyway, um, Sorry, just saw I got a text from Grace saying, uh, like, call the police if you don't hear from me by seven o'clock. She's um, selling some furniture because she's moving and she sends me that text every day. And while it's smart, it's also very funny. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm only six pages in, so I struggle to tell you I'm digging it, but like, I'm digging it. I'm about to start some reading sprints. Why is the Pomodoro on seven minutes? Things I can't explain. Anyway, I'm about to do some reading sprints and I need to edit. This is, <laughs> if you know, you know. This is how far we are into the video. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, and then I want to read more of How to Sell a Haunted House. Okay, let's do some sprints. Oh, look, the buddies are here. Hello. Hi, I'm basically in standstill traffic. Don't you love the city? They're always doing construction on the highway. Like, wh why? What are you doing? Wait, wh does it need repainting like every week? Like, I'm just confused. Anyway, um, I was working a party earlier and I was the only one working it, which was awesome because I got a chance to read. But I got to page 28. So I read like 22 pages, I think, or 20 pages. But we are following a girl and uh, she is in her 30s. And she, I already told you like she has a... um. Or did I tell you this? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, she has a five-year-old daughter named Poppy and she is not in touch with her brother because her younger brother is like the black sheep of the family, but the parents are very Southern and the mom is like obsessed with him and loves him and thinks the sun shine, shines out of his asshole. And she gets a phone call from her brother who she has not spoken to in three years. And he calls and says, hey, uh, by the way, mom and dad are dead. And she's like, what the fuck? Are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, they got T-boned. So they're both dead. And she's like, uh, excuse me? So she is going back to the old family house. And just now at the part that I am at, she arrives at the house and there's a bunch of creepy ass dolls everywhere because apparently the mom collects dolls. Like clown dolls, like. What? Um, yeah, so she goes into the house and she's like, something's not right. Like this just does not feel right. Like something's off. And I mean, I'm assuming since the book is called How to Sell a Haunted House, that the house is on it. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. So that's as far as I know so far, but I really love Grady Hendrix's writing. And I really love that I'm only 28 pages in and I already know so much about this character. I already know so much about her relationship with her family, her relationship with her daughter, her relationship with the father, like her backstory, the um, personality of her parents and her brother and everything. Like he's just so fast and fun and also like sad, like, the description of when she finds out that like her parents have passed away was so fucking sad. It was so sad. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I might read while I drive. Don't do as I say, not as I do. Do not do that. But I might do it. But don't tell anybody. Okay, goodbye. Ew! Ew! Oh, Grady, Grady Hendrix, Grady Hendrix, I need you to, I, put the pin down, Grady, put the pin, put the pin down. The nightmares I'm gonna, the nightmares I'm gonna have today, oh my god. no. No, no. This is so disgusting, what the fuck? I wonder what kind of nightmares Grady Hendrix has. That this is his imagination. Oh, 
Okay, no, really though, really, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. We're gonna take a breather and we will be back to this some other time later. I don't know, at nighttime or I just, I need a break. I'm trying desperately to enjoy this morning slash afternoon in peace. And Grady Hendrix said, no, not on your life. He just unlocked a new fear, okay? I am blowing through this book. It is so, so, so fast of a read. Oh my God, so thrilling, so fast. And also I relate to this main character so much and it is draining the life from me. Oh my God, so emotional. But page uh, 115 and 116. I literally have to keep stopping and being like, <laughs> squirrel. Grady Hendrix. Uh, you know what? I never thought that it would be squirrels. I did not think that you were going to pick squirrels. Okay. I mean, I've read your books where you do rats. Yeah, that's already scary. Cockroaches, already scary. Vampires, scary. Like, oh, exorcism, scary. But squirrels? This man is unhinged and I'm obsessed with him. And I don't know if I should keep reading because like, I feel like the sunlight doesn't deserve this debauchery. So I don't know, I might keep reading or I might go wash my mouth and my eyes out. Hello. It is much later in the day. So uh, I didn't get to read since I talked to you last because I was at work and I wasn't on a party or anything. So I'm surrounded by people. And even when uh, I don't have a table, people want to like talk to me. Like I swear, if I have a book, people take that as a cue that I'm bored. And I'm like, no, this is what's keeping me from being bored. Like, and I'm sorry, but like, there's literally absolutely no way that you're going to be more interesting than this book. The, the tea would have to be scalding hot for you to come between me and this book. But unfortunately, duty called, so I couldn't read. But I got to page 148. I read... Those are my tabs. That was embarrassing. I haven't started tabbing yet because I'm not sure what I want my system to be. But I am highlighting so much because I'm relating so much to this main character. Like it's a little disheartening. Um, but yeah, I am absolutely loving this. And I never thought a day would come in my life where I would be genuinely scared of a squirrel. Like, oh my God, I was on the phone uh, driving home and I was on the phone with Grace and she was like, she was like, oh, I'm gonna step outside. Uh, or sorry, I was on the phone when I was driving to work. And she was like, she was like, oh, I'm gonna step outside for some fresh air. And she stepped outside and she was like, oh my God, there's like a squirrel watching me. And she didn't know I was like reading this book. And I was like, go back inside, go back inside right now. Oh my God, oh my God. It was scary. Anyway, I got to page 148 and I'm trying to get myself to like stop reading because I need to be editing this video. Uh, I'm gonna flip you around so I can show you. I think I showed you this earlier, but I'm editing this video. This is my best books at, um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to call it, but like best books in 2022, according to booktubers, but I am editing this and I am on like minute 10 out of, I've edited it down to like 39 minutes, but I'm on minute 10 of going through and seeing if aren't changing all the volumes to make sure that they're all relatively the same. So it's not jarring, but then I also need to go through and film myself doing an intro and outro and a clip in between each of the books. <sighs> but the end is in sight. So I need to at least finish scrubbing through and doing the audio of this before I keep reading. But it's like, I can't tear myself away. So we're going to try. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a 
a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hello. It is quite a few days later, like at least three, if not four days later from the last time I talked to you. And I'm at work right now. It is a Sunday, so it's very slow. So I am going to read this book for as long as I can until I start to get tables. But here's the thing. It was going so quickly for so long. And then things, things have gotten a little tedious. I'm not gonna lie. Not bad. Like it's not gotten bad. I'm not saying that. But it's gotten a little ridiculous. It's gotten a little ridiculous. So the puppet, the okay, I hope I talked to you about this puppet. Pupkin, the puppet, the mom's puppet. Pupkin is so weird and creepy. And yeah, that's great that it's creepy, but it's gotten like, because Great Hendrix also has like a comedic element to him, it doesn't seem I don't want to say realistic because it's a demonic puppet, like obviously, but it just doesn't seem like believable in a scary way. Like it just seems ridiculous, you know? And obviously there are scary things that are happening, but I felt like the squirrels were terrifying. Pupkin is just annoying, to be honest. And you know, it, it's just getting a little tiring, but I did just get to a plot twist on why Pupkin is the way he is. That was good. I hope, I hope that the ending to that revelation is gonna be really good. Um, but I do have to go back to work. But I just wanted to tell you that, unfortunately, the beginning of this book, like the first third was five stars. And now, at best, it's gonna be four stars, unfortunately. But I like it, but I'm not loving it anymore. I finished it. Yay! It's done. It's done. And this is why. This is why I don't annotate and tab the first time I read a book. Because unfortunately, this really took a huge nosedive. This took a huge nosedive, in my opinion. And that really sucks because for a lot of reasons. One, I love Grady Hendrix. I hate that I feel this way. But the first third of this book was five stars. I was obsessed with the first third of this book. And like the squirrels were terrifying. Like all the creepy dolls around the house. Like that was scary. Like, oh, are they moving? Like what's going on? The relationship between um, Luis and Mark, the brother. The relationship between Luis and her dad. Luis and her mom. All of those were so interesting. And then like Mark's relationship with the mom. All of that was so good. But the second that Pupkin, the puppet became a main character what are we what what are, what what are we talking about what are we talking about it just got like i get that a puppet being like the main character or like the main villain or whatever on one hand can be really scary but on the other hand is absolutely ridiculous like it's absolutely ridiculous and it is as ridiculous as it sounds and pupkin was just so annoying he's so annoying like just constantly being like Kekawiwi, however you pronounce whatever he was saying. He was like, Kekawiwi, Kekawiwi. I don't know how you pronounce, like, how you say it, but it was so annoying. Like, none of the pumpkin stuff, in my opinion, like, I get that it's a puppet, and, like, I know that puppets are scary, but, like, none of that was scary because it just seemed like a really annoying child that wouldn't stop screaming. And I was like, okay. And then I felt like the tension between the brother and sister and the tension of like the way that the fam, like the parents um, had re ha like raised them and all of that familial dynamics just completely died after the first third of the book. And we like never talked about it again. And I was like, what? Like, okay, now I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say that this book is bad. I think in honesty, I would give this book two stars, but because I loved the first third so much and because I relate so much to this main character and I really enjoyed that, I'm gonna give it three stars. I did, I would not recommend this book. I would not recommend this. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just, dis I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed and I'm also really disappointed that I highlighted so much in this book. I highlighted so, so much. 
So I guess I'm going to put it in a little free library. Sorry to the next person who gets it. Anyway, I'm going to catch you in the outro. Okay, we are here for the final review. Now, I'm not going to say too much because I already said a lot. Mark and Luis's relationship, which is so interesting and frustrating and if you have siblings you just understand so completely that no one can piss you off like your siblings can your siblings can say something that any old schmuck off the street could say to you on any day and you would just like roll your eyes but if your sibling says it you're literally going to tear apart their room and destroy all their shit like you are going to rage out if it's them because they know how to get in your head they know so in that, I was like, oh my God, this is so good. I really thought that that was going to continue and we were going to get like progression. Where in my opinion, the second that Pumpkin came into the story, like a Hallmark movie where there's just like this twinkle and the snow started falling and all of a sudden they were like, I was wrong about you all along. Like, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm talking shit and I didn't enjoy this, but based on every other person I've seen reading this, I would still recommend it because apparently, you know, these things that I didn't like are not misses for other people. I do think the execution is messy and the beginning of the book has nothing in common with the end of the book. But I do understand and would recommend it for people and say you were probably gonna give it four stars because it's fun for other people. <laughs> it's scary for other people, you know? I would give it two stars because that's how what it is in my heart. But because of how unique the story is and because I love the first third so much, I'm gonna give it three stars on Goodreads, but I'll probably end up changing it to two stars. I'm sorry to say it, but that's where we're at. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've gotten this far, leave, I want to say the house, but that feels like a little bit too much on the nose. Leave the ghost. Leave, if, I was about to say leave the puppet emoji. Can you imagine if there was a puppet emoji? And no, that is too, that, that would be too powerful of a summoning omen, okay? So leave the ghost emoji if you've gotten this far into the video. If you want to follow me on Goodreads um, or Instagram or Patreon, those links are gonna be down below as well as a myriad of other links to help support this channel in many different ways. You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stained from the people who deceive me.